right, what's going on, guys? Welcome to a new video. As y'all can see, we're in the we're in a vehicle here, uh, exiting the beautiful city of Manizales, La Ciudad de las Puertas Abiertas, the city of the open doors. Uh, and we're headed today to a pueblo called Murillo, Tolima, the neighboring department of Tolima. Right now, we're in Caldas, so we're gonna switch departments. Just like the U.S. is divided by states, Colombia is divided by departments. Uh, so we're gonna be entering a new department and the road that connects Manizales to Murillo crosses over a paramo. The paramo ecosystem is only found in Venezuela, Ecuador, and Colombia and only exists above 4,000 meters above sea level. Not sure how much that is in feet, but for those of y'all United States peoples, I'll put y'all uh, the information in feet. Uh, paramo, obviously, since it's so high up, it's uh, almost always cold. The weather is very unpredictable. The Paramo ecosystem almost looks like it's from another planet. Like it's really unique. It's something that I've always wanted to see. I've always, you know, I've been in Colombia for years and I've never been to a Paramo ecosystem. So today we're gonna drive through it. God damn, look at these trucks. These roads are kind of dangerous because of how, how windy they are and how huge the trucks that be transiting through them are. And we're just going up and up and up and up and up and up and up. Oh. You see that huge truck up there? Well, it's important to note that the volcano Nevado del Ruiz is very close to here. And if it erupts, <laughs> it could uh, definitely affect us. And it's uh, one of the most uh, active volcanoes in the country. It's on a, a yellow alert right now. You know what I mean? A lo loco is like they just do it without even like Even though it's not a safe place to do it and they just do it Hopefully everything goes good <laughs> But I don't like to I don't like to drive like that You know, I'm not I'm not a fan of that I like to uh I would like to not crash If possible If there's a, if there's a bunch of trucks it becomes hard to progress Look, yeah, there's, there's a there. truck coming and this guy's overtaking oh. Look at that, look at that there's a trailer you have to go back in his lane. It's like, you see, like, you overtake someone and then you meet face to face with that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, you can't do it. to accelerate like I I press the gas and it's, it takes forever like si tuviera una fortuna te llevaría hasta la luna y compraríamos un motel si fuera eterna la noche we're very high up right now man we're very high up I feel it in my head so we're gonna take a few stops along the way to show you the landscapes, to show you uh, what it is out here. I'm gonna have to throw on my other little impermeable. We're going to Cali next, man. So I didn't, I didn't want to bring too much, uh, too much warm clothes, because uh, you know Cali's hot, and we're only gonna be here for like another day or two. So I just brought a hoodie and like a, and a rain jacket, <laughs> but it's, fr oh, it's yo, gray. it's freezing out here, bro. It's it's, it's, it's genuinely. Like, oh nah, <laughs> very oh, <yeah>. cool. <laughs> All right, guys, this is the first stop we're making along this along this road, uh, and I wanted to show you La Laguna Negra, which translates to the Black Lagoon. They even have a little blurb here in English. It says it corresponds to a glacial lagoon of volcanic origin located at 3,700 meters above sea level. Its formation is due to the growth of the dome and the advance of the associated lava flow. I don't know if they explained that well. It was basically made uh, from 
from glacial waters and volcanic activity. It's our protected area, so there's, you know, you can't build on it, can't farm on it, can't do nothing on it. And it's beautiful. It's really a beautiful site. And over here, they have a little spot where they sell hats for to keep you warm. And some snacks and some uh, ruanas. A ruana is like a poncho, but it's a poncho for cold weather. I, have, I would say it's in like the 30s, like in Fahrenheit. And in Celsius, that's like zero, like zero Celsius, maybe like one or two. And we haven't ate nothing and there's a restaurant right here. Um, a restaurant right here, so we're gonna see if we can get some food. Oh, look at that doggy. That dog looks mad comfortable. All right guys, so this is the restaurant. It's called Restaurante Kumandai. Oh, it's right here in front of the Black Lagoon. And I wanna show ya. So they, they make typical, you know, mountain food here. Look at the kitchen. And over here, I thought this map was interesting to show ya. It says, Mapa de amenaza volcanica potencial de nevado del Ruiz. So, riesgo alto. This is a high risk for, in case, like, if the volcano erupts, this area right here would be at the highest risk of being damaged or being, like, engulfed in landslides and lava. I'm not sure exactly where we are right now. Manizales is over here. So, I assume we're somewhere in the red we're going to Murillo so we, we started here in Manizales and we have to go to Murillo so we have to cross through this high-risk area Antiguo Armero this is the pueblo uh, in which 20,000 people died that's why it's called Antiguo which means old because it's just ruins now uh, that pueblo no longer exists because it got completely destroyed <clears throat> all right so this is the this is the humble little breakfast that we get uh, a piece of bread, some scrambled eggs, and some nice local cheese. So let's get this first bite here. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Gracias. Gracias. Sí. Mm -hmm. Y arepas de chocolo. Mm. Mm. All right, so I got agua panela. Look, y'all see, it just completely, completely absorbs it. Mm, 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 mm. Now I'm gonna show y'all how to eat arepa de chocolo, which is like a sweet corn, and in the form of an arepa. So you take this beautiful, nice block of local cheese from the mountains of Caldas and Tolima. Oh my God, look at that. Look at that, man. There's nothing sexier. There's nothing that I could cry. All right, let's take the bite. Arepa chocolo con queso. Very good. Top This is comfort food to me, bro. This is like childhood comfort food. Oh. Man, when you're cold, a hot agua panela just like warms up your whole body. I don't know what it is. Warms the soul. Yeah, so good. Right, so right here is where there's a store and there's a restaurant. But, uh, oh, there's a little bullying guy. I wanted to show you guys this plant. Uh, one of the many plants that uh, exist here in the Paramos. It's this pale white plant. And I went to touch it. And it's literally soft, silky, silky soft. It feels like a... Oh my God. <laughs> it feels like cotton, bro. Look at that. I don't even think any of my clothes. This, this thing feels like a ball of cotton. Bro, or even softer than that. I'm telling you right now, none of my clothes is this soft. <laughs> And these flowers, like there's so many interesting types of plants and plants and uh, flowers that that only grow here in uh, in the Paramos in the high mountain. The sun came out, thankfully. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> we're gonna keep on keep on pushing to Murillo. We'll make some more stops along the way. Yo, look at this, man. And there's this is a field of frailejones, of pure frailejones. So the frailejon uh, is actually endangered. And, uh, the Colombian Environmental Department is working hard to try to protect
preserve them because they are essential to the Paramo ecosystem. And it keeps the ecosystem healthy, it keeps everything balanced. But since they're endangered, uh, this ecosystem itself is endangered. Oh my God, it's cold. I've never seen anything like this. Espeletia, known in Colombia as Frailejones, are exclusively found in the Paramo ecosystem between 3,000 to 5,000 meters above sea level. Frailejones are essential to maintaining the delicate balance in this fragile ecosystem by absorbing the water from the fog through their leaves, channeling it through their trunk into the ground. For this reason, they play a vital role in regulating the supply of water to the Paramo, which requires large amounts of water for it to survive. The Paramo goes through a constant process of collecting water from the environment, filtering it and slowly releasing it, making it an extremely important source of high quality drinking water for Colombia. Frailejones only grow one centimeter per year, meaning many of the frailejones you see here are between 100 and 300 years old. This ecosystem would fall apart without them. They are the guardians of the Paramo. Bro, oh, look at how the clouds just fly through that hole in the mountain, that, that gap. Nah, I wouldn't I don't trust that thing, bro. This is peace right there. I mean, you wouldn't fall far, bro. Nah, that's uh Yo, with that view right there, if you get to that, if you get to that solid That's surface spooky over there. as hell, bro. I don't know if I'm built for things like that. But yeah, I mean, it's held up by these columns. You probably could go in and it would be fine. Cerro Guali. And this landscape here is just like, like my eyes aren't used to seeing these types of colors and shades of plants and. So my GoPro is kind of low on battery and I don't have a way to charge it right now. We're gonna go on the same route tomorrow uh, on the way back. So everything that I didn't show you on the way here, I'm gonna show you uh, on the way back. But we're really at like, I think this is the highest part, man. We're super close to the volcano right now. Um, man, imagine how good that spring water is from these paramos, volcanic mineral water. This is a very narrow and windy road. Um, it's extremely impressive how they built this up, up here. Extremely impressive. Because uh, this is really... <laughs> I mean, imagine when there are no roads up here to come up here and, and build it. Very well paved though. I guess it must be an important road. It connects Tolima and, and Manizales. Wow, the Fray Lejon, if you look at the back of the of the coin for a hundred peso, it's uh it's on there. Okay, and it has little flowers that come out at the top of it. You can only see them when you're close. And look at this. It looks like, it literally looks like lava flowed through here at some point. Like all that rock, it kind of almost looks burnt. I don't know if I'm bugging or if, cause I know there are certain parts where, where there's literally canyons created by the lava that, that f uh, flowed down from previous eruptions. This is it. I thought we passed it already, but this is the one. I know because I've seen it in pictures. Uh, this is all the burnt rock uh, in the canyon that was created by the lava from the eruption in, in 1986 or 1985. I don't remember exactly the year. It was either 85 or 86. But look at that. Look at all the... It just created a canyon, man. It, like burnt through all that rock and land. Rio Azufrado, which means Sulfured River.
mountain. Wow. We're almost at the pueblo. I'm probably gonna run out of battery, so I'm gonna film what I can until we get into a into a hotel and uh, I can charge. Let's check this out. There's not much to see. That river is nice though. You wanna see the lake down there though? There's like a little pond over here. Alright guys, welcome to Murillo, Tolima, a new department in Colombia, unlocked. I've never been in uh, Tolima before. We're very close to the border with Caldas, so there's a lot of influence, like Paisa influence. But the people here, I was doing some re research on this pueblo, it was founded in 1871. So there was a big influx of people from Boyacá and Cundinamarca, which are departments that are farther to the east of Colombia, generally Cundinamarca and Boyacá are um, high altitude and they're cold just like here so the paisa influence in this town is this architecture we see right here with the colors uh this is uh, antioqueño and paisa influence uh the way they color their their houses uh with these patterns and the balconies uh so it's like a mix of different cultures that influenced what murillo is today they were influenced by paisas and the Boyacenses and the Cundinamarquenses that came here seeking opportunities. When this pueblo was founded, uh, people came to grow food here, to raise dairy cows. And the Boyacenses, since they were accustomed to growing potatoes and frijol and yuca in their land, they brought that custom here. And uh, here they grow a lot of potato to this day. So the town is very, very rural. Like, I don't know how many people live here in Murillo, but You'll see uh, little fences here. Sometimes there'll be like a cow in here, some cows. Or up here in this one that you see up, this is potatoes planted. Um, and the people, they were at Ruanas. Uh, the Ruana, like I was saying before, is the poncho. It's like a thick wool poncho that keeps you warm. That comes from Boyacá. Oh, that's not like a typical thing to this region, but from Boyacá that the people here adopted from their ancestors who moved here a long time ago. And uh, you'll see the, the old guys later. I'll show you how they dress with their, uh, their ruana. And for those of you who never seen potato before, this is potato. And Murillo is 2,950 meters above sea level, which is nearly 10,000 feet. Right here it says, I love Murillo. Dice yo, la lucha en Tolima. Paisas y cundiboyacenses llegaron a estas tierras a luchar por lo, las más bellas. El final de aquella historia, la cultura de, lo demuestra. Tiene ruana el abuelito y hablan paisa las abuelas. Es una mezcla de culturas. Esta sí que es muy bella. Bella como sus paisajes, sus cascadas y termales, viejos robles, humedales y hasta el condor de los Andes. Se ven pumas y tigrillos y ordeñando hasta los niños. Aquí se siembra la papita y el mercado es el domingo. Es un nuevo paraíso y lo llaman hoy Murillo. Bueno, es Murillo. That guy is wearing a ruana. You can see, and this is the sign. Bienvenidos al municipio de Murillo, la perla del norte. Yeah, you see, it was founded in 1872, and then in 1985 it was declared a municipality. The people here talk with a different accent. Like in Manizales, they still talk paisa. And some people, it's like different uh, levels of paisa in Manizales. Like some people talk like really paisa. And some people talk in a more neutral accent. But here, like the accent is, is different. Like it's not even paisa. Like it's un acento tolimense, uh, which is nothing like el paisa. But like that sign says, the abuelitos who are from this pueblo, they talk paisa because uh, well, probably not all of them, but a lot of them have descendants from Antioquia and Caldas. What is this? I wonder what this is supposed to be. But if you see this guy who's walking over here, he's wearing a ruana. 
and that's uh, that's the um, Boya Sensei heritage from the Department of Boyaca. And they even look Boya Sensei, like the people from those high altitudes, they get the red cheeks and they got the thick mustache with the hat and the ruana. Like, it, it almost feels like you're in Boyaca and you see the dairy cows and the potato. I've been there once, uh, but it really reminds me a lot. And it's interesting how different uh, departments and different cultures in Colombia came together in this pueblo. And look at all these dogs. A lot of street dogs here, like compared to other pueblos. Yeah, okay, look, he's gonna go, he's gonna... Oh, I thought he was gonna go chase the motorcycle. Oh, you're nice. You got my trust. <laughs> he's like rubbing all against me, he's like a cat. He must like be all on my leg. Bonito. Bonito. This is the church. Any pueblo has to have its, its main church. So, it's, a, it's an interesting, interesting vibe here, bless you. Interesting vibe in this town. I've never felt anything like it. It almost feels like, almost feels like I'm going back in time. Like even the women, they dress with like these traditional dresses. Um, and like the ponytail. Let's look here. Always interests me to look how the churches are inside. Va a entrar a la iglesia con el otro, sí. Sí, a la iglesia. Oh, they got the Virgin Mary up there. It's a pretty basic church. You can see uh, behind me there's some uh, ejército over there. A lot of them are just, you know, young guys who are trying to do something because uh, they didn't know what else to do. Uh, some people make a career out of it here. <laughs> but the uh, actually the Colombian military, people who have been through the Colombian military training and, ha and uh, prestado servicio, like, have given military service. But once they retire, they're very sought after as bodyguards, uh, in private security, as mercenaries. The ones who go to Ukraine, there's actually a, a couple that are in Ukraine, I don't know how much, I think a few hundred, uh, and they get paid like 4,000 a month to, to fight in Ukraine as like private contractors. So the Colombian army is, they're, they're trained, they're trained killers. Like these old guys, they just like walk around like aimlessly, like I don't know what they're doing. Like, there's nothing to do here. Well, I think they just pass the time, they just, you know? Yeah, they're I mean, just. I, I imagine some of them still work, you know, doing like. Uh, yeah, in the campo, work. yeah. Do you like living in Murillo? Yeah, you like living in Murillo? <laughs> Weird vibe here though. I, I really never been in a place like this. I've been to many pueblos in Colombia and I <laughs> never been to one that feels like this one. All right, so it wasn't that cold before, but obviously as the sun goes down and the night comes in, the temperature goes down a lot. The temperature goes down OD. Uh, so I feel like I feel like every minute is getting colder. Man, I'm I'm starting to get really cold right now. And the kids here, since like the high altitude, uh, the sun like burns you a lot more. And the wind from the the cold wind, uh, that combination makes their have like rosy red cheeks and like red faces. Uh, so people who are born and raised in like high altitudes there uh, Like the red cheeks and the red face From the elements Parece yo ahí haciendo un video del viaje Documentando Páramo, yo estoy grabando ahí todo el viaje. Oh, this is a ghost town. Like after like eight o'clock, there's nobody out there. Like you'll see some bars with some of the old guys drinking beers, but man, it's be spooky, honestly.
mete muy loco, parce. Cuando uno cambia de pavimentada, es zapado. No siente sí. como salta. Ah, pero no es de zapada, ¿sabes qué? And a dog like lurched at us, bro, while we were going fast, bro. And I thought like, <laughs> I thought it was gonna like hit into us and make us crash. No. But he was like, no, ese hijo de puta siempre, se, siempre tira, pero no hace nada. <laughs> like he just gets close and doesn't do shit. But like, yo, I had a heart attack. Yo. Cause he was going fast, bro. And like, shh. I never gone that fast on a, on a cuatrimoto no, before. Bro, he's going way too fast, bro. Bro, this, this town is so dead. All right, guys, good morning. Freezing night, man. Like, it, during the day, it was manageable, but at night, it was freezing cold. And in the morning, too, it's like 9 right now, so it's starting to warm up a bit. But in the early morning, it's so cold. You just don't want to get out of bed. Here's the here's the room we stayed in. 80 mil pesos per night, which is like uh, $18, more or less. They gave us some nice blankets. Uh, which are essential here to be able to sleep comfortably. And if y'all know this one, this is the classic. <laughs> Esta la que es, this like wool with like different colors of cloths mixed into it. This one is the the warmest blanket. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty comfortable. The bed was comfortable. Uh, the room was very clean and nice. And this is the bathroom. The bathroom and the... Electrically heated shower. Um, for me, it's really important that the room be very clean. So this was a good, nice and clean room. And check this out. So y'all can see how rural this is. They have a beautiful garden back here with, those are fig trees um, and all types of flowers. They grow a lot of flowers which is great for the uh, crops because it attracts pollinators. It's all wood. Uh, it doesn't have much insulation, so at night it gets really cold. Mm. But it's cozy anyway. I think that cow's pregnant. Uh, yeah, check it out. 80 mil pesos. Good price. I think it's a good price. All right, so this is how the uh, place looks like on the outside. Shadai Hospedaje. Definitely recommend it. It's a comfy, cheap hotel uh, here in Murillo. And a lot of places are kind of expensive here. The main movement of economy here is agriculture. And they're trying to make it more touristic. They're actively trying to bring more tourists from El Eje Cafetero, from Manizales, from Pereira. Because on that road that we were on yesterday, on the Paramo, there's no uh, toll. It's in, in Colombia, there's tolls almost on all roads that cross between departments. And that road has no toll, so that makes it a attractive route for people to, to go explore this part of the country, which is Tolima, which is now out of the Paisa region, out of the coffee region. Today we briefly passed by this sign, but I wanted to show you in a bit more detail. Uh, each letter has uh, images that are typical to Murillo, a bird, a uh, campesino man from here with his ruana and his mula, potatoes that grow well in this cold climate and that uh, they inherited this uh, costumbre, this culture of growing potatoes from their ancestors in Boyacá, the church, a little kid with his ruana, the dairy cows and sheep and flowers. The old lady with the wax palm nearby here. There's a wax palm, the tallest species of palm in the world. And this is el condor andino. It's the national bird of Colombia. And it is native to the high altitudes of the Andes Mountains. You see it flying. It's a huge bird, man. It could easily be like, man, it could easily be like, like three, four feet tall. It's an enormous bird. I've never seen one with my eyes, but. Apparently uh, before there was more and there were, you could see them more often, but. They're, they're rare now. Wait, preguntar si tiene tamal. Sí, pero me demoré a calentar. Si me esperan, yo los caliento. Como ah, bueno. Unos 15, 20 minutos porque están en la nevera. Que me tocan ah, atar, calentarlos. Y el tamal viene con arepa, chocolate en agua, leche, queso y pan. 
So we stopped here. I uh, wanted a tamal because here in El, Tol El Tolima, El Tamal Tolimense is like the most typical dish to this region. And in Colombia, uh, people from this region, when they go to other parts of the country, uh, sometimes they'll, they'll make a business just selling food from Tolima. Lechona is also like a full pig that's roasted over fire with like rice and different mix of foods. I don't know exactly what it has, but those two things are very typical to this region and people love it all throughout Colombia. Even in Medellin, I've had tamal tolimense, um, but I've never had tamal tolimense in Tolima, so we gotta have that. Um, yeah, it's a nice old house here. It's beautiful, honestly. Yeah, it's beautiful. See, it's really old. It's completely wood. There's like a little store here too. With a bar. I have a garden. All right, guys, we got breakfast served. This is tamal tolimense. Nice piece of cheese, a piece of bread, and an arepa. So let's, let's give it a taste. And in Medellin, I used to live in, in Belen, and there was this lady from Tolima that used to sell tamal tolimense, and I used to go often. Mm. Look at that. It's usually made with pork meat. It has potatoes, carrot. Oh, it even has an egg, a, a, a boiled egg. Uh, it has peas in it, even some rice. Yeah, yeah and this is like rice and it's a hearty meal. Look at that. Mm. I'm gonna try it out. We got some chocolate. See how it absorbs the chocolate? Mm. Has a very earthy taste. Yeah, right, like an earthy taste. Mm -hmm. I feel that. You can taste the campo, you can mm -hmm. taste the you can taste the countryside in this. Mm. My first time I in Tolima, <laughs> in my life. Hacer un tamal, eso cuánto se demora más o menos uno haciendo así varios tamales? Dos días. Días, dos días. Dos días, ni te alista todo. Y el tamal que eso trae cerdo, arroz. Trae cerdo, trae pollo. Mira, te vas a decir, cocinan el cerdo lo cocinan en agüita sí. y las carnitas. En esa agüita hacen la masita que es con harina, eh, ma, eh, harina de maíz. Ajá. Pero tiene que ir bien condimentada con las cerdas. ¿Qué haces? con cebolla y ajo, ¿cierto? Cebolla y ajo. En esa harinita, esa, esa agüita, donde cocinas te haces la harinita. Aparte cocinas el arroz, aparte tiene las papas en delgaitica, la zanahoria y cocinamos los huevos. Ajá. Y ya como cocinaste las, las, la, las carnes, las tienes aparte. Entonces pones la hojita, pones la masita, pones el poquito de arroz, pones las alberjitas, pones todo lo que es así. Sí. Y te envuelves, amarras. Y dos horas cocina, huevo, lleva para la pava, lleva zanahoria, lleva arveja, lleva arroz y lleva pollo. Lleva tres ingredientes de carne. Pues sí, mi primera vez acá en el Tolima y quería probar tamal sí, ah, aquí. Bueno, vean, es el tolimense. <ríe> sí. Estamos para servir. Ah, bueno, muchas gracias. Que disfruten hasta allá por acá. Bueno, gracias. Hasta luego. Well, look at this, wow. This is a beauty. With the with the star, he's got the shovel and a, and an axe. Oh yeah! <laughs> and look how they look inside. Completely manual. Look how old this is. Look at the, the speedometer. It really does look like an authentic army van, like one of the old ones. Wow. Yeah, the cactus only grew in the desert. Nah, man, it grows here 10,000 feet above sea level. Wow. With these beautiful flowers. Look, guys, I think this is a papaya tree, but. No, it's not papa. What is that fruit? Buenos días. Por acá se baja la cascada. Oye, una pregunta. ¿Esta qué fruta es? Es papayuela. Papayuela. Ah. 
es como más dulce que la papaya normal, ¿cierto? Sí, pero eso no, para usted comérselo así no, no sirve. En dulce, ahí en el parque usted pregunta y ahí venden harto dulce. Ah, la mercado. combinan con dulce. Sí, ah, con arequipe o mora o algo así. Ah, ah primera vez que veo un palo de papaya. Sí. Pues sí le he visto que la venden por ahí, pero sí. no he visto así como crece. Gracias. Dale. All right, so this is the trail to the waterfall. You have to pay 10,000 each. Oh, let's see. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hola, vaquitas. ¿Qué más fue? Más fue eso, me. Ay, es linda. Look at her eyelashes. <laughs> Just long eyelashes. They be chilling here in the mountains eating grass all day, man. They have a good life. Wow. Cascada el silencio. Para nuestros ancestros las cascadas eran templos sagrados de adoración y meditación. Regálate un minuto de reflexión. Looking into water just flowing like this over the rocks, it kind of puts you it kind of puts you in a meditative state. It relaxes you and it kind of slows down your thoughts. Oh, you can feel the vapor. Super fresh and nice. No, muy miedosos. La oleada cuál es tiene, vecinita. Eh, la oleada viene con arequipe, queso, mora, coco, maní y crema de leche. Miren, no me queda sino eso. Un señor y se llevó 12 tarros. 12. 12 de de arequipe. Es que, es que marica, es que usted probara de eso. De este. De y este, este del es Uchua. Ah, no, es que usted probara eso. Es que este, si no soy más, viene con maracuyá, ¿no? El arequipe es de maracuyá. El arequipe ah, es de maracuyá. maracuyá y Uchua. Epa, uy, no, es una combinación. De locos, <risa> te lo juro. Es una combinación de locos. Bueno, ¿qué más La Uchua es de tierra fría, ¿cierto? Sí. La Uchua la rica. Uchua, la Oreva, la Mora, los Ajá. arándanos. Yo todo se da por aquí. Se el Lulo, ¿cierto? Sí. El Lulo, sí, también. también. Se da harto. Acá me lo dice, acá el que llega muy yo tiene que parar acá. Mm. Obligado. Es que delicias murillenses. Eso, eso me da la comida ahí. Delicias murillenses. Mire la olea. Mire la olea. Mire esa belleza. Ay, papá. Mira la pastica de mora. Eso es una belleza, muchacho. Y ahí está bien, me comí dos tarros de este y uno de este, imagínese. <risa> ¿Ah? Cuando está el muchacho yo. <risa> ah, mira, también vende la, la pomada de desinflamante. De marihuana. Sí, desinflamante. Uf. Dios. Ah, muy buena. Yo le dije, ¿no? Uy, este parque es muy bonito. Con todas las flores. Sí, que todas las flores son naturales. O acá en estos climas fríos se dan unas flores muy bonitas. No, una belleza. Nada más estos palos. Me quería ir de aquí sin comprarme esto. Que uf, yo probé esto, parce, como hace uf, como cuatro años. Una y desde ese entonces no vuelvo a tomar. A lo bien. Sí. Uy, marica, mucho tío. Le dice producto de Tolima. Esto es del Tolima, entonces acá se consigue más baratico que en otras partes. Y ya en Medellín, por ejemplo, este licor no se consigue. El aguardiente amarillo 
de manzanares. Yo siempre pensé que era de manizales. <risa> y un aguardiente. Como más suave que el de que el antioqueño, ¿no? Es como. Alright guys, so I had to uh have to use the iPhone uh just to end off the video because my SD card got completely full and I can't delete anything because I still need all that footage. So we exited Murillo. This is the the highway that goes to Manizales. We're going back to Manizales. Ah, the views here are insane. 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 So we stopped here. I wanted to show y'all this lagoon. These lagoons come from under the ground, if I'm not mistaken. The Paramo, what it does is it acts like a sponge and it collects rainwater and filters it and it slowly releases it. So there'll be lagoons, there'll be creeks and rivers and, and natural springs. Alright guys, you just have to make quick stops here if you want to take uh, videos, but we didn't stop here last time and I wanted to show y'all this. Look at that red moss, man. I've, I've never seen that anywhere else in the world. Look at how clear this water is. Oh my God. Look at that. You can see there's a lot of clouds coming in. But I'm really impacted by how crystal this water is, man. Coming down from there, it's probably probably even good to drink. I don't know. Look, it's blue. Amazing. Crazy. All right, let's get back to the car before a truck comes. <laughs> guys we made it back to manizales safely we're here now in the city i hope y'all enjoyed that video i hope y'all learned something new i definitely did learn new things uh the pueblo of murillo was a very unique place for me i've been to a bunch of pueblos in colombia and i really never been to a place like that uh that felt so stuck in time it was only like two days but i felt like i lived so many so many experiences in such a short time so i'm glad that i was uh i'm glad that i was able to film it and take y'all with me and share it with y'all. I mean, it feels safe, but like you gotta just, I mean like anywhere. I mean, bro, bro this lonely street right here is not a good vibe. Like anywhere in Colombia, bro, you just gotta be on your, you know? Look at how lonely that is, bro. You gotta be on your PC. So I'm running up on your shoe with a motorcycle is slow for you. <laughs> right here, look, right here. Man, dude. It's like really, it really like, the city just dies at night. I mean, most Colombian cities do, honestly, unless it's the weekend. Yeah. Uh, even in Medellin, if you walk around like past nine or ten, it's pretty dead. But this is like obviously even more dead. It's a smaller city. I mean, bro, this looks spooky out here. No, but like, bro, no me da, no me da confianza caminar por aquí, parce. That's something in all Colombian cities that I've noticed, bro. Like, at night, it just gets lonely, bro. Like, it gets lonely. Yeah. No matter what city you're in. Obviously, you go to like El Pobla and Medellin. Like, people just don't be, don't want to be too like, much in the yeah, street at night. Like this is like the the hood that we're staying in. See, there's a little little husky, some girls out there talking. Uh, the house we're staying at is up the block over there. Uh, yeah, man. Gonna call it a night.